continue the Dvar uh, Malchut, the speech that the Lubavitcher Rebbe gave in 19, 1992. The Rebbe gave in Tavshin Nun Beit. This is not long before he had a stroke which rendered him uh, pretty much paralyzed. And here the Rebbe is speaking about Parshat Noah. We already started this. You can look at what we did yesterday. And he's <clears throat> working on the theme that every word in the Torah, and especially every idea in the Torah, is a message to us about why we're being created, that God is creating us constantly and that we don't feel it because we're not in tune because the reason God's creating us is in order to serve him. And we're not in that direction of serving. We're in the direction more of receiving from God. And so in order to sort of change direction, it's called doing tshuva, thinking what we can give to God is we have to learn from the characters of the Torah that they were faced with the same dilemma as we are in the world. And people naturally in the world feel egotistically. They want more. And they don't appreciate the fact that God is creating them. And they don't feel that they're able or that they even want to return this love and to serve the creator of the universe, to love God, and to appreciate God, to fear God, to believe in God. <clears throat> So once in a while, there's people who make this big breakthrough. One of them was Noah. As we said before, Noah was like 1,600 years after Adam. And since the time of Adam, things got worse and worse. People became more and more selfish, more egotistical and more egotistical. So finally, Noah was the only one that wasn't doing bad. Now, as we said before, Noah was not a Jew. Noah he was not a Jew. He was a human being. And he was the prototype of what a human being is supposed to be. That's why the, 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 the path of the non-Jews, the way the non-Jews are supposed to live their lives and serve God is according to what's called the seven Noahide commandments, seven commandments that God gave Noah. Really, God gave these commandments to, to Adam. And according to some, like the Rambam, the Maimonides says he gave six of them to Adam. But Noah was the one, he began the world again, brand new. So God regave them, so to speak, to Noah again. By the way, what are these seven Noahide commandments? What are they? Uh, to worship only God or not to worship idols. The, the commandments are negative. They're prohibitions mostly because Noah, his greatness was mostly that he didn't do anything bad wasn't like Abraham. Noah was not the first Jew. Noah just had the tremendous fortitude and, and courage to defy <clears throat> the rest of the world, not to be drawn after them. Very difficult thing to avoid, to withstand peer pressure. Almost impossible. But Noah did it. And Noah did it. Noah. Noah was a person that was called a tzaddik by God. He was called a righteous holy person, Tzadik Tamim, it says. But he was mostly in turning from bad. So what he gave over to all mankind was mainly with the seven Noahide commandments, That's they're negative. They say that there's also 30 positive ones. I wrote a whole essay on it, to pray to God, to love God, to love others, to, to give charity, etc. But it's, it's the one that's called by seven Noahide commandments. Seven Noahide commandments are don't worship idols. Well, don't worship idols. Christianity is forbidden. Don't blaspheme. Can't say anything bad about God. <clears throat> don't steal. Can't steal other people's property. Damage other people's property. Don't kill. Can't kill other people. Of course, all of these, there's certain situations where you're allowed to. Kill if someone's coming to kill you, you can kill them. Someone takes something, they owe you money, you can go and take it. 
But they never does. <clears throat> don't worship idols. Don't kill. Don't steal. Don't blaspheme. Don't say bad things about God. Don't commit sexual crimes. Sexual crimes are like homosexuality. Taking somebody else's wife. Having relations with your mother, with your family. <clears throat> having relations with an animal. Forbidden. Commandments of Noah. You're not allowed to eat a limb that was taken from an animal before it died. Non-Jews. And that they have to make courts of justice to enforce all those previous six. That's all right. Let's go. Come on. All right. So the Rebbe is saying like this. What was the big thing about Noah? We got a world over here, and God made the world, but the world conceals God. That's the way God wanted it. And our job is supposed to be to reveal the creator in his creation. So the name of God, which is mostly connected to the creation, that's the name Elohim. Elohim in English, you know, in Hebrew. But we don't say that. You say Elohim. It's forbidden. That's what it means, taking God's name in vain. It's forbidden. So you have to be careful not to say any of these names of God. I've met, I went to Manhattan, to the Louis of Esrog, doing the asking Jews if they wanted to do Lulav and Etrog. It's a commandment in, in the holiday of Sukkot. And there were a couple of non-Jews that said, you know, I believe in Adonoi and this. That you're not allowed to do that. And I even told one of them, I said, you can't say that name. So written, she said, oh, maybe you can't, but I can't. It's not right. Non-Jews are also they're forbidden to use God's name lightly or improperly or as a curse or whatever. Okay, let's go. So the, the job what Noah did was he succeeded in revealing the name, the essence name of God, which that's the name of Hashem. We call it, that's Yud Kei Vav Kei. It's written, represented by Yud and then Hey and then Vav Hey. But we don't say that. We say Yud Kei Vav Kei. Okay. So he revealed and others the creator in the creation. This is also hinted at the Tochna Shal Parshat Noah in the content of this Torah portion that after God made the flood that destroyed the whole world because everybody was really sunk into doing sins, as God said, from now on, heavens and the heavens and the earth and the seasons, when, when there was the flood, it says that, that all the stars in the heavens, the whole entire constellations, the whole everything, all the zodiac, it stopped for one year. But it says, from now on, that's never going to happen. And God said, from now on, nature is going to continue and humanity will continue. I'm not going to wipe out humanity anymore. And God made a covenant. What's the covenant? God made a rainbow in the sky. And when it says that the heavens and the earth, the seasons and everything, they won't stop. Like it says in many places, the conduct of the world is, and then it goes constantly without any change. Like the sun, moon, the stars, call it Golgulim, and all the planets that go around, they'll never, they'll never stop. They have their paths. In other words, let's say it in simple language, there'll be laws of nature, and they won't change. There's a The laws of nature, this reveals the power, the infinite power of God, and so which is above the limits of the world itself. Because the Medida Vagbala of Olam there should be stopping. I am Hashem, no Shiniti. So according to Judaism, for instance, the sun is going around the earth, whatever the earth is going around the sun. According to the Rambam, the sun's going around the earth. The earth is in the middle, which Jews have been making that calculation, you know, long before what is Copernicus. He was the one that said that the sun is in the middle. So the, the Jews have been making the calculations of the month and things like that with the, based on the principle that the earth is in the center accurately for thousands of years before Copernicus. So you can do it either way. In any case, whatever it is, the laws of nature never change. So according to Judaism, the sun has been going around, the, the, the planets and everything have been going around for 5,783 years. According to science, they don't really know. There's different opinions, but let's say there's an opinion of a million years, a trillion years, whatever. <laughs> They've been going around. So if, that's pretty amazing. Everything in the world changes. Everything in the world wears down. And, and, and then, what do you want to say? That the sun 
the, the planets, the movement of the planets has been going on for millions, billions of years and it hasn't changed. That shows on some sort of an unusual power of God. Power, some sort of an 